So today's video actually spans two days because we had a bunch of family stuff pop up at the last minute. But we, we started out taking a wheel off the GS and basically we had to remove the discs. And of course, as you, if anybody that's ever removed the disc knows, one of the screws didn't really want to come out and it was a nightmare getting it out. But I showed the tip that I used to take it out as the nuclear method and that, in the end, of course, it did work out well, but once I had the wheel off and the discs off the wheel, it's a simple thing. I wanted to restore the discs. I wanted to clean up the surface, repolish the inside part of it, and do a bunch of other little maintenance things. One of the little speedometer covers that goes on a disc needed to be repainted, and a bunch of other little details, and here we are with the discs trying to get all these parts as restored as possible while we have the bike apart. They have brand new screws going in. Everything's Loctited in. And by the end of the second day, this really, this really was labor intensive too. By the end of the second day, I had the discs on the wheel, but we had already run out of time and we already had family stuff to do. So we'll install the wheel on the next work session. So today we want to work on evil twin wheels. It's going to be a little bit difficult moving things, moving things around here because it's raining outside. And the first thing I have to do is move the bikes around so I can get this guy chalked up and get the front wheel off. Now, in yesterday's video, I showed that Baja no pinch tire installer that, that Chuck gave me years ago. And I watched the videos on YouTube yesterday at the end of the day to see if it was going to be something appropriate. They all showed dirt bike wheels. But I'm wondering if we're going to be able to use it. I'm going to have to be changing the rear tire on this very soon. I'm going to definitely try it. It looked like it would work pretty good. And <laughs> what's funny is the demo that the guy was doing with the dirt bike wheel. It looked better than the way I was doing it. So, But I don't know. It's not a sport bike tire. Dirt bike tires are a lot more flexible. We're going to try it in the next tire change for sure. Now this is funny too. Karen looks at the weather a couple days ahead of time. It was supposed to be nice for a couple of days, and now they're predicting snow, so it changed. But it's raining right now, and I've got to maneuver the bikes around. This always gets a little cumbersome, but it's got to be done. I can't, I can't take the front tire off. I want to always have the safety of having to come along, so there's no way that bike can, can I, once I take the front tire off, it can tip over. And this is what we're going to be dealing with all day today, and for the next couple of days. But you don't have to shovel rain. And there's times I think I spend half of my life as a parking attendant here moving things around. But when you have a limited space and a lot of junk, this is the only game in town. Well, now I've got the front wheel at least off the ground. The come along is there just for a safety thing. Now in the past when I've used the jack under the engine, I've always thought there's always a possibility. But this is, I think, the safest way to do it. And in my case, safety is king. I'm out here alone. If that bike ever fell on me, the odds that it'd be, <laughs> there'd be spider webs on me before anybody knew I was out here. All right, so that is the, that's the easy part of the job. I wanted to go have a cup of coffee, and I got a couple errands to run. But this will get me set up for the day, and now I don't care. Let it rain all day. Looks like we might have some hungry birds here this morning. I don't know, they look hungry to me. I'm hungry too. <laughs> this is a good little tip if you are uh, if you have a pond, and I know several of my friends do. What I did this year, I started the, the pumps and filters way before I normally would, about a month before in fact, and let them start filtering out all the goop out of the water as I stir it up every morning. And so far, I've, in the past, we've had an algae bloom for about a month. We've got nothing. This is the third year in a row, so I think that's a good tip. Start. Start the waterfalls, start the pumps early. That's what's going to make this day go turbocharged. Now the rain is just coming down and it looks like we're going to have rain all day. So this is a perfect day to work on that front wheel, pull the discs, maybe get the new wheel back on. Yeah, it looks like we picked the perfect day to do this. <laughs> oh, crappy weather. Glad it's not snow. I like to get all the errands out of the way before I start because once I pull that wheel, I want to get it done as soon as possible, get in the house and drink more coffee. 
beautiful downtown Rutherford on a rainy day. It just never ends. Oh, it's always good to be home and I get all the errands done and now it's time to put on some work clothes and get to work. There's always one answer on a rainy day, just drink more coffee. That'll make the rain go away. Coming down to shop to Oogle Joe's Parts. Oogle my wheel. Now the idea is I gotta pull that wheel off and pull the discs out, then mount that gold wheel to the other evil twin. And the other part of the thing is I'm gonna contact Joe today, see when he wants to come over and pick these up. And our back wheel, we're waiting for Vlad. Of course, Vlad's a busy guy, as I say every day. Waiting for him to, we need the back sprocket that replaces this sprocket. And then we're ready to put the back wheel on, but it'd be nice if we could just get the front wheel on today. I'd, I'd settle for that. That'd make me very happy, in fact. I know you can't see this, this wheel in real life, but it really did came, come out way, way nice. I really do. I really think once this is all put together and out on a sunny day, it's going to look really nice. And I'm going to try one of these tires. I want to try that tool that it's the Baja No Pinch. And again, if it works on sport bike tires, boy, that'll be just look like real nice. It worked real nice. And of course, it'll work on the RD where you have tubes. So we're definitely going to do that in the next uh, week or so. We get to work on that, the 750 rear wheel. So with the front wheel off the ground here, the first step is I want to get the calipers out. I want to get them up on zip ties. And the whole objective here is I want to get the discs off the wheel today, no matter what. So I can take them downstairs and do that little rejuvenation and repolish on them. And if I, if I see the day is running late or Karen changes the plan, I'll put the wheel back on without the discs just so I can move the bike around in the garage. And boy, that rain is coming down here basically the whole day. So and we're not losing a riding day or we're definitely not losing any day we could be outside doing anything. It's always a little annoying getting these out because they're blue lock tighted in. In fact, I ought to lay them right here. I'm out of the way. Now, what I always do is I, I wiggle a caliper just a little bit because it, it lets it slide back without putting a nick in a wheel, which obviously is one of our things. So I slide it back, then I can very conveniently get it back and get it out and get it zip tied up out of the way. I can look right now and see how much material we have on the brake pads. They look great. Uh, and I'm not sure when we put these on. Not that long ago, though. But the pads look fine. So I'll clean this all up with brake part cleaner and get some zip ties out and just get this zip tied up out of the way. It's, and I've, every time I've done this, I clean in here and I clean and I, and I try to make it as nice as possible, but <laughs> you never know. It just brake dust just gets everywhere. Compressed air makes a good uh, a good way to clean some of this out also, as long as we have it apart. All right, so it is zip tied up out of the way, and we just do the same thing to the other side. Well, one of the things we have to work around every day here is because of Miles being in a school that they've been shut down for COVID. They go back to school, they shut it down, they go back to school. We really can't make long range plans because we help out, of course, with uh, his care. So just knowing today is one of those days, we don't know how that's gonna all play out. But the last time he went back to school, two days later, they shut the school down, so. Okay, both of the calipers are up and out of the way. We just have to loosen the bolts that are on the bottom of the axle carrier and pull the axle out. So it's always good if you leave the other side, the little clamps on the bottom tight while you, you loosen this one up and then loosen this. It just makes it a little bit easier. One of the little steps you can do to make this job a little easier. Not a big deal, but every little bit helps. And these are bolts that I would always make sure I have before I put them back. Take the nuts and clean them with brake part cleaner and re-lock tight them. This is always one of the concerns I have is keeping this front end tight. And I do remember, by the way, this is a true story, I do remember a friend and he took his bike in for service one day and they never tightened these bolts and he was going over to George Washington Bridge and the front wheel was wobbling around and it was these bolts here, they never torqued them down. Now, 
it's always a good idea. I always keep a, a very s thin coat of wheel bearing grease on everything so nothing rusts. That's one. Number two, anytime I have the speed I'm going to drive apart, I pack it, clean it, and pack it. Again, with wheel bearing grease just to keep this as, well, we don't want to have to buy another one. I'm not sure you can get, you even can, and I've already used the one off the parts bike, so I don't know. But it's always better to have them well maintained. So we can get this up out of the way now too. We don't need that. These are out. I put all these parts up on a table, and we're ready to pull the discs. And while I have this apart, a little bit of brake part cleaner, get some of that brake dust off in here. And it always aggravates The brake dust is a killer. Boy. Now, there's always a little bushing that stays in that side until we go to put this all back together again. That can stay there. We've got most of the brake part dust off. Well, I have the calipers off here. It is pretty easy to, to clean up the parts of it you really can't get to when the bike is all assembled so anything I can get off of here this makes it a little bit nicer for me now it's just for me I want to clean some of the goop off of this wheel it's, it's all about the brake dust always clean this up and I'll be ready to pull these bolts the R1 bolts are red loctited in oh my god well Blue Loctite seems to work okay for me on this, but it's just, it's just annoying that I always have to remember that this little ring goes on there. I want to clean these things up as I take them apart. Now, unfortunately, what happened today is uh, common in my family. Miles' schedule has changed, and he's going to be here in about 15 minutes, so I've got to clean up. And we'll pick this up tomorrow, but we did get the discs off anyway. And it will, every time I can get one step ahead on this, I'm really happy. Well, that pretty much ends the day, and we got to go get Miles. And we'll pick this up tomorrow. It's, we got the hard work done. This is the, the easy stuff is putting the other wheel on. It's been a pretty good day, though. Just want to let it down off to come along so it's not <laughs> it's not breaking the beams overnight. It was a good day, I shouldn't complain. A rainy day in London. So how funny is this? It's a rainy day and Miles comes here. You know what he wants to have more than anything? He wants to have a root beer float. Luckily, I got one more root beer left. Look at all this. This is this is really a treat. See, this is how we uh, we try to cheer up a rainy day, but there it is. This is a rainy day root beer float. <laughs> oh my god. It's like being a kid again, right Miles? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, how good is that, boy? It's good to be Miles McKeever. <laughs> oh, look, at, I get the little float, you get the big one. What's wrong with this picture? Well, what a difference a day makes. We wake up this morning, the temperature's dropped way down, but we are supposed to have some riding days coming. And the wind is howling again. Where is all this wind coming from? So while I'm out here flipping battery chargers, I'm really glad I got that all pulled apart yesterday because I can work on the discs this afternoon. And there is a chance Joe's going to stop by and pick up his parts. I'm not sure. And I don't know about Vlad. These are busy people. And <laughs> like me, they got a lot of stuff on their plate. But I'm glad to have that done. That's one thing. And if we do get to go riding, we'll just push the bike. That's where I wanted to put the, the wheel back on just temporarily so I could move the bike back and get out one of the other bikes if we're going to go riding tomorrow. But we're going to, everything's unpredictable this time of year. Now I meant to put this on a video from yesterday, but I just didn't get the time. This is what happened. We, we always have one bolt when you go to take the discs off, one or maybe more. In this case, we had one bolt that just was locked in for whatever reason. I don't know what happened. And we just couldn't get it out. Well, what usually works is to heat the bolt head. And that's always choice too. That makes it a lot better. But the, the, the nuclear option is I take a Dremel tool. And let me just show how this, what happened here. It's, and this is why this never got on video. I had, a bro I had broken this little tool that I made to put the slot in the head. And what happened, it broke. Now, what happened is... I did not have a spare handy, but I managed to get it out with the impact driver. Now, the impact driver 
almost always gets it out, no matter, even if you don't have the heat. But that cutting that little slot in there with a Dremel tool, uh, and this is the wheels that, I, of course, I got to go get another one today at Harbor Freight. I'll get a new pack of these, and it comes with the mandrel anyway, but these are really handy when you have a frozen bolt. That's a really good tip. And this is, I know there are heavy-duty ones. This is a Harbor Freight one, and it's a really inexpensive tool. And usually what happens, you wind up, when you do these, I wanted to show this, I really don't have a, a convenient close-up way of doing this. When you use the impact driver on these, it usually, you only have to hit it two or three times, and it at least breaks it away from what's freezing it in there. Then, from that point on, you can use the wrench, but to break it, when you have, no matter what kind of head on a bolt, sometimes it's a, a hex head and you get it stripped. And I remember one time on Luciano's Ducati, we had a bolt that was holding the, the steering dampener on. It was absolutely impossible to get out. And we wound up doing this, and I, I know that's on the video somewhere. And we wound up with the impact driver, and it was perfect. So this is like, I call this the nuclear option. When you have, and it's always on brake discs, by the way. Anyway, I hope that's a good tip you can use, and that, that, that does work well. And these little inexpensive Dremel tools from Harbor Freight, and heck, here's the one I wound up repairing and using. All this stuff's available from Harbor Freight. It's, it's mind-blowing how good it works, and for such an inexpensive price. And when you buy these things, and I just happen to have a spare pack here, very inexpensive, but boy, the day you need one, Boy, that becomes the nuclear option. Again, the, this tool I've used <laughs> just so much, even for buffing and stuff. And the, these are two things to have in your toolbox if you're doing this kind of work. So down in the shop today, what I want to plan, first thing is I wanted to see if Joe was able to come and pick up his parts today. This would be a good day to do it. But again, we're always working around everybody's schedule. Oh, huh, that may be Joe. But the one thing we will be able to do one way or another, whether Joe is able to pick stuff up today or not, we'll be able to get work on those brake discs. So my plan was I wanted to thoroughly clean these with brake parts cleaner, of course. And then I have a, a very mild pad to take off some of the glaze off of these. Now in the old days, and I know this is, this is an ongoing thing with technology, they made these discs out of material that was very soft and used to take a beating. And then they would, on, on some of the bikes, they would even replace the discs, I think. I don't remember. I don't remember how I wound up with a spare set of discs when a bike was almost brand new, whether they replaced them or not. Because I had one of the very early, early 82s. Doesn't have the welded crank or any of the options that some of the bikes have. But anyway, this, to clean these up, and then what I do, and I, I've already done it to the rear wheel, that tool puts a nice... A nice finish on it, and it gets rid of a lot of the, um, I don't know what you call it, the brake glaze. And then these are really good then for quite a while. And the only thing I found is, and I looked at the pads, the pads look fine. So I was going to put brake pads. I don't even think I'm going to have to put brake pads on. So today's job will be I'll rejuvenate those discs. Again, it's a pretty straightforward job. I've done many, many times, and it always seems to work well. And with this, we have limited options because I do have a set of EBC rotors, but they they were not as good as these. I I was kind of disappointed. They're floating rotors, and I I don't know how to explain it. I always like these better, but maybe I just got a bad set. I don't know. But I do have two sets of these, so we, we are definitely going to work on these, clean these up. This will be today's project. So the first thing I want to do is clean this part up, wire brush it down a little bit, and since I already uh, have gotten it this far, I can get a coat of paint on this, at least one coat of black paint. It'll be drying while I'm working on the discs. So the first thing, of course, is to try to get all the grease off it, of which there is plenty. I don't want to take a wire wheel and grind that grease down into this part. Now this is pretty funny, as I'm wiping this down with brake parts cleaner, you can't make this up. Paint came right off, so <laughs> this must have been an aftermarket paint thing. I don't know, maybe I did it even. I don't know, but we, I want to roughen this up with the wire wheel and then put a real coat of paint on it. Now it's a really good tip to clean 
any part you're going to wire wheel. Don't wire wheel anything that's got grease or oil or, or whatever. That, that residue always winds up on the wire wheel and on your hands. And then when you go to paint it, you get nothing but problems. And I can't emphasize enough. It's just so important. And my wire wheels, I want to keep those wire wheels clean. So I always use them just before I paint something. I don't want any contamination on them at all. Now while the compressor is building up pressure, I'm just going to get one coat of black on that for right now. And that, that can be drying while we're working on the discs. Alright, it's very convenient to have it, <laughs> have it jigged up on that. The, uh, the kicker can fits right on there. So that can be drying while we're working on the discs. Now in the middle of doing this, Karen has uh, made a little request. We've got to run over, pick up some supplies for supper tonight, but since I want to eat, that might be a good idea. And one final thought before, uh, well, I know this is on the video already before I leave with Karen. Uh, Joe had some discs, he had some uh, machine work done. I think it was about 90 bucks to do the set of discs. But I got to see, now he's only ridden a bike a couple hundred miles, I want to see, once he gets a thousand miles or so on it. That may be one of the upgrades we want to do in the future. Eh, I don't know. But but right now, these the, to rejuvenate these will only be less than an hour. And they'll be like, at least good for riding the bike this summer. We, we plan on getting a lot of riding in. And just again to... Uh, repeat that information from Dallas that you can replace this is the rear disc or we've already replaced it with a front disc they're interchangeable and this is one of the things if you pick this one up at the same time as the front one boy you can feel a difference so as long as we have a bunch of extra discs there's no point putting the uh, the Titanic back on there when we have a lighter one and we'll see how that works out and I'll report of course but right now Karen has the final vote and we're looking at all our stuff and hopefully connect up with Joe, if not today, tomorrow, the next day. I mean, I'm sure he's ready. He's excited about getting that bike put back together. But we got to head out. Now with the wind howling out there, I'm going to have to take the birdhouse down before it blows around again. Maybe I'll just throw the seeds on the floor. Are they out there? No, they're not out there. We are having a windstorm. How unpredictable is this weather? Holy mackerel. Just look at this weather. That wind is blowing, baby. <laughs> what a day. Well, I hope the van doesn't get blown off the road here today. Where does all this wind come from? Jeez. We need fresh vegetables every day almost. Fresh vegetables. So healthy. One more stop and we'll be off to see Buddy. Oh, I love shopping for vegetables and fruit. I love being alive. This is how you stay alive. There's the secret to long life. See what happens if you play your cards right? Eat enough vegetables, you turn into a robot. <laughs> Very cool. Look at this guy, he's going shopping. Very cool. Oh my God, he's getting bigger, Stacy. He's getting bigger by the minute. Oh. God, he's huge. Hey, you're supposed to be a puppy. What happened to those puppy days? Oh, oh my God. Look, he, he's helping you get your coat off. Oh my God. So happy to see Granny. Oh. You happy to see me too? Oh, you've got him well trained. Wow. Better trained than me. That's for sure. He loves you. <laughs> oh no my biting. God. No biting. No biting. No biting. Kissing. Razor teeth. Kissing. No biting. Kiss now right, we're finally back. Back to see how the shop's going to play out this afternoon. See if we get that wheel finished. We've got a nice sunny day anyway. So here's the real secret to getting a set of discs rejuvenated. <laughs> anyway, to make a long story here that people, maybe people are not familiar with this. This, I know the old technology was this is a softer material that used to take a beating from the from the pads and I know they changed it over the years but 
but I know just rejuvenating this brings it back to life a certain amount. Now, and this, of course, is from Harbor Freight, and they have these little pads. I found that the blue ones, the softer ones, seem to work the best. The idea is to get it in a drill press, so you just come up on the edge, but not over here. Just come up basically right to the edge, and you can actually feel how much of the material on this pad is being used as a brake pad and how much is overage. Now, if you've checked the other one, you see, ooh, it's a little bit different. So I want to make sure I get them on both sides, of course. And I found using this on high speed on a drill seems to work the best. I'm not sure it's as good as what Joe had done, like a professional machinist, but it does get rid of the glaze and it does get rid of a lot of these little imperfections that cause that lever to be, at some point in time, you get that pulsing lever thing. Now, some of the other tools I've tried to use, these are the heavier ones and the bigger diameters don't seem to work as well. Just, just other things I've tried, wire brush doesn't do much at all. But the bigger diameter one, it's just harder to use the bigger diameter one. So, And they always make these pads, they just screw right on. Again, it's just Harbor Freight stuff. And, and they probably make a professional tool to do the same thing that you could buy. Here's another one. And these, you could buy a professional tool for, uh, you know, probably four times the price. This one seems to work fine. So I'm going to go over to drill press and get started on one of these. So I want the drill press on the highest speed possible. And by the way, they do make these, they call them twist lock fiber discs. They, these come in different grits, but again, I've found the blue ones to be the best. For this particular job, these seem to work the best. And they're inexpensive enough, you don't have to wear them down to where there's nothing left on them. It's like a piece of sandpaper. They do wear out, and they're cheap enough, you can get a new one in there. But they do a nice job. Now here and fast forward, just to uh, show a couple of things, just a comment is, I would never try to do this while the disc was on the bike, and you wouldn't be able to get in the back anyway, I don't think conveniently anyway, maybe there's somebody good. The idea of this is you put a tremendous amount of pressure, you get good leverage in a drill press. If you put this in a drill and try to do it without a drill press, I'm not sure how it would play out, but I would always take the disc off to do it this way. So that's one side done of one disc, and I'll put that in fast forward. But now I just try to feel if I've missed, if, if there's any deep gouges in these. And these are really not in terrible shape. I've had worse ones than this that have cleaned up pretty nice. And of course, we just got to do, when I do this side, you've got to move the table over. So otherwise, this gets in the way. You've got to get this right on the edge of the drill press table. But again, this is just time consuming, and we'll get it done. Now, the next step is just to dress off the edge. There's usually a lot of oxidation and little stone chips and everything along the edge. We'll try to clean that up next. Now, I always think whenever I have a bike apart or parts in my hand, it's a sin not to clean them up or do, something, do anything that's difficult to do when you don't have the bike apart. And it's all about the little details you think nobody's going to ever notice. And all of a sudden, one day you realize, oh, I could have done that while the bike was apart. All right, I just want to clean up the hubs just a little bit on the buffing wheel. And we'll be ready to install them. And I think it's all of these little details. A little detail here, a little detail there. And it just changes the whole look of the motorcycle very easily. Okay, it's ready to install the discs. And I want to make sure I get the right hand side on the right hand side. Uh, they are unique, they're not interchangeable, not exactly. I think it has to do with the holes cutting or whatever. And if it isn't, they've got me baffled, which is not that hard. Anyway, I want to one drop of Loctite on each one of the screws. I want to do this whole thing hand tight. Just like you would put an engine, a head on an engine. I don't want to take and tighten one bolt down. And let, I want them in a star pattern. That's always the best way to do anything. And then at the very end, torque it down to factory specs. And I try to put a lot of this redundant stuff in fast forward so you wouldn't be bored to tears. But 
It is important, I think, to have these bolts torqued down in a star pattern, not, again, not one tight and then the other one's off, just to keep everything in alignment. You know, just a question to do on the other side. And yeah, I think we're in good shape today. That worked out pretty well. And once I finish up the second side, I think we're going to be good to go today. And this is this video took two days to make, but it was well worth it. We are ready to install this on the bike. Well, this turned out to be quite a productive two days. We're ready to put this back on the motorcycle, but of course, more things are happening. We have family things every day now. I was unable to hook up with Joe today, but of course, Joe's got a busy life too, so does Vlad, but we've got all the stuff that we possibly could get done on a wheel done, and we're ready to install it next time we do a work session. Now, there's some riding weather coming up. I don't know. I can't predict what's going to happen, but I know I can predict thanking the healthcare workers. Thank you guys so much. I'm only a couple of days away from getting my first shot, Karen also. And I'll be thinking about these wheels while I'm getting, getting my coronavirus shot. Anyway, I hope there's been some entertaining, good uh, information for you here. And I love having these custom wheels. It's, it's one of the things I really enjoy about motorcycling. And hope you did enjoy the video. And, of course, thanks so much for watching. Now I do try to post up something motorcycle related almost every day. We've been working on several projects over the winter, but the project that I'm looking forward to very soon completing is getting these wheels onto the Evil Twin project for the GS1100. And anytime I've worked on my GS1100 and done anything to it, I've just enjoyed the ride more than the time before. And I've made carbon fiber mufflers for it. I've made complete sets of bodywork, gold wheels, seats, handlebar options, <laughs> done a lot. Tried five, six different types of tires on it. And and just, it's just been a great bike. I've owned it since new. It's got over 70,000 miles on it. And it's just nothing about this bike that ever disappoints you. You ride it hard, you ride it slow. It's comfortable, it's relatively fast, it accelerates hard. It's reliable as a stone. I don't know what else you can say. It's just, just a, been a great motorcycle. It's been a great friend, actually, when I think about it. And there's, there's memories tied up in these 2000 videos of this bike. It's just hard to describe. But having things on video and being able to look back at them, so rewarding. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed the video and enjoy our adventure with Evil Twin Projects and this GS1100. And thanks. Guys, thanks so much for watching.